That is my dream tonight. I was on a journey and it was through the MRT system. I received an instruction to go somewhere. I don't exactly know where, so I have to receive the instruction so as to go somewhere. So the journey is very interesting. It goes from one station to another. So after reaching that other station, again I receive another instruction. And there I will then bar upon another MRT and move to the next station. Um, but finally, something happened. Uh, it was, it passed midnight. Once it passes midnight, I don't know how to return back. Because there's no MRT to bring me back. But before, I, before, it passes midnight. I thought that I have a way to return back because I received the instruction. We say that I need to return back. So I tried to return back, but I was wondering how to return back. I got to retrace the mapping. I got to retrace all the routes back. Not an easy thing, but I need to look back at where I come from. But while doing that, I didn't realize, but the clock has moved. And it's now after one. So there's no more MRT. I say, oh no, I cannot return back. So what I did was, I just simply stretched myself and on the floor at the MRT station and just lie down for a seat. Tomorrow, I'll take the journey back. To say that during the dream, when I was given an instruction to go to the MRT station and to take one journey to the next MRT station, according to instructions given, I had thoughts that the next MRT station would be the final station. I would have reached the destination. But interestingly, it wasn't so. The instruction had to be given again, so I take again another journey. Okay, that's the first thing that I noted. The second thing I noted is that finally, uh, I had this idea in my mind that I had to retrace my step back. Because if I don't retrace back my step, then how do I know where the destination is, right? Because I've been led through one station to another and I'm not sure where am I actually. So I wanted to retrace back as well because that's how I know where I can go to, the destination I can go to. But interestingly, it, it passed the midnight and I couldn't go back. Okay. The third point of the dream is that when I look at the clock, which passes midnight, is 1.1. That's right. So I thought maybe that would be important information. It's coming from the dream, so I'm now saying it. Okay, so what's the interpretation of the dream? A quick interpretation of it would be that actually our life is made up of many journeys. And every journey that we take, we thought that we have a destination. We wanted that. And the idea of a destination comes into my mind simply because there was a beginning. Because there was a beginning, there has to be an end. But in truth, there is no such thing as a beginning or an end. So because of that, that's why the instruction came that I should go for the next and go for the next and for the next. There is, in fact, no end. Then, the second point, which I think I have learned from this dream, is that actually the game will continue 
until I reach to the point where I am that I am. Because that's what it means when it says 1.1. 1 .1. That's where it ends. And that's where I abase myself. There's nothing to move further. And I take a rest at the station and realize that tomorrow morning when I wake up, I'm going back for another journey. That when I finally reach the 1.1, 1 .1, what did I do? I actually slept at the station's floor. That's right. And I will just sleep there. And in the dream, I had this idea that people will come and see me. And they will see this uh, good-for-nothing person out here having nothing in his life. Because when I stretched on the floor, there was no bags that I'm having. I'm just bare and nothing. It's possible that I could not be only wearing very scanty clothing. So whatever it is, I'm totally zero. Yes. That's the point, the nullification, totally zero. But that's the point, that I and I is one. This thing is that if you read the Upanishad, or if you read many sacred books, they give you the idea that at the place of total realization, you are special. But in this dream of mine, I'm told, no, it's a total dissolution of whatever there is. It's simply I and I is one. And it's exactly what the universe is all about. The Creator God completely dissolves itself. You can't find the Creator at all. Right? Yes. So, it's zero. But that itself is awesome presence. People are just simply thinking that they own heaven. They reach mansions after mansions. Oh, they'll sit there enlightened and to watch the universe move by. But I don't think it is so, because presence is simply just one. I felt total beauty and happiness when my breath touches me as one. That is present. And presence can be felt right here on earth. Right here on earth, I could be in heaven every moment. I'm so happy indeed having a body and having an observer aware that this whole world is my body. I'm not treasuring the body, but neither did I say that that the light is, is, is the end all. The truth is that the light, together with the observe, although apparently is two, is always one at the nullification point of presence. The dream is emphasizing to me that I don't have to wait for the end. Yes, since there is no beginning, so there is no way for me to wait for the end. Actually, at any moment right now, I'm already enlightened. How? <laughs> it is the moment when breath and me is one. When all that is everything is just presence and nothing else. No doubt at that very moment of presence, you don't need a thought. Yes, that's true, you don't need thinking. That's what the Buddhist is saying. No doubt at that point of presence, they are completely celibate, as Jesus is saying. The birds have a 
missed, but the Son of Man have no way to lay his head. No doubt. But, but presence is just right where I am. And it's not travel by much thinking, nor is it travel by no thinking. It's what's important is a nullification of two opposites. What's important is that when I relate with my fellow friend, I, the observer, is zero. And the fellow friend that I have is everything, because that is a reflection of me. What's important is that I empty myself to zero and allow the other party to talk and be what they want to be. But, but, at that moment, just being a two is not enlightenment. At that moment, every two that he speaks is like breath of God speaking in me, so near to me that it vibrates within me as presence. That sitting all alone up there in the mountain, and thinking that you're enlightened because you feel very good about yourself is not enlightenment. Because without a two, there is no one. Get it straight. The journey of our life begins with a beginning and with an end. There is a two. When we have a relationship, we talk from a male to a female. When we are friends, we talk to each other. There's always this anti thoughts that trouble mankind. Even when you do a project, there's always a struggle to complete the project, and there's always an opposing forces that seeks to nullify what you do. But, uh -huh, in all these actions that you do, in every journey that you take, from every MRT to MRT, there are two opposites. It doesn't matter which MRT station it is. What you need to do is a nullification of the two back to one. It's a nullification that is most difficult. The most challenging part of a man is to realize that he's zero, but that's not the point is to be zero, that's the point. Can you be zero when your friend is totally nine, 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 a million? Can you be zero when your friend is infinitely big? If you can, you are enlightened. That's right. So I notice a lot of these priests they say they're enlightened, but they actually desire somebody to kneel down at them. Is that enlightenment? You say as uh, somebody whom you think is enlightened, let's say Jesus Christ, but then you're kneeling down at Jesus Christ. Is that enlightenment? You take a savior, you idolize that Saviour in your mind, and you kneel down to that Saviour. No, it doesn't happen this way. Enlightenment is when there are two opposites, nullified into one, meaning that that two opposites is yourself, not someone else. You don't go about worshipping another person. You just simply yourself. You simply realize that there is two and you simply bring that two to one. Now, you may say, I'm already one. Bullshit. There is no such thing. And that's the point I'm trying to say. There's no such thing. You see, the Bible in the Torah, the first verse is, in the beginning, create God, the heavens and the earth. 
there's a tool, there's a heaven and earth to create God. It's a very important point which I need to mention. In this dream, after going to a certain destination, I thought that I should go back from that place to the beginning to retrace back my steps. So, the question in my mind is, why do I have to do that when enlightenment is simply the meeting of two as one? The reason is because as I have moved from A to B, so shall I return back from B to A. There's nothing that I could receive from the universe. So if I receive instruction to go from A to B, then I certainly must receive instruction to move back from B to A. So the journey will continue. So is there such a thing as an end to birth and death? The journey must continue because in space-time you can't benefit from it. If you have received something from somebody, you will give it back to that somebody. Because space-time itself is treated as an entity of its kind. And so you have to repay back. So, can the reincarnation ever end? The journey must continue for another reason. As I mentioned, the two must become one. So, how can the two become one if there isn't a journey? But, we shouldn't be afraid to give to something, to somebody. We shouldn't be, because space-time cannot be a negative. Space-time must always be zero, ultimately. So, you just centrally, you simply can't lose out from space-time, but you can't gain anything out of it. To gain anything, you just have to be yourself. And to be yourself is a meeting of yourself with yourself. You are really not gaining because Yourself is forever East. So there's no losing. The soul is forever East. Unchanging. There is no losing whatsoever. So to be the presence, you just have to return to the presence. And to return, the two must become one. Counting test time, you must say this, the soul is eternal. And if you're saying that soul is eternal, you should say that space-time is eternal. Because space-time is a reflection of the soul.